So today we're in uh, the Cotswolds and we're going to a place called Season Coat House which I believe was built in around 1805. Probably hear the uh, roar of the engine. It's my old, uh, my old VW camper that I'm in today. These old diesel engines are just really nice, especially when we're going up hill. Indian house and gold works. In 300 yards, turn right. Have a look at this old car. It's an Austin. Mm -hmm. So when you've parked on the car park, then there's a bit of a walk down to uh, towards the house and the gardens. So it looks quite pleasant. Shouldn't be too far, I wouldn't have thought. Okay, so we've just come inside the gates and uh, this little driveway is going to lead up towards the house where I've got a tour in about five minutes. So I wonder if we'll be allowed to film inside. It's always a lottery when you come to these places, so we shall see, but it looks a nice place. So as I said, this was built in about 1805 and very rare for an English country house. This is built in uh, an Indian style, like a Mughal Empire style. So you don't see many of these. So it should be quite an interesting uh, little look around today, to be honest. See there, on the main house, you can see uh, some domes and stuff, it's quite clear like, in an Indian style, so see in a bit. They've even got their own tuk-tuk here. Look at this car, manufactured by HM, not sure what that is. But look at the uh, lining and decoration and so on. You can see. So I've just come out of the house tour and uh, it's only a short one, about 20 minutes. Um, I didn't really get much video. Because, um, I mean, I didn't hear anyone saying you couldn't film, but no one else seemed to be, so I only got a couple of little bits. But yeah, it's quite nice inside. Yeah, so as I was saying, it was uh, built around 1805 in the Indian style, 
and it was designed by someone called Samuel Pepys Cockrell for his brother Charles who basically asked him to build it in that manner and um, so what you've got is basically an extraordinary Indian style house in the middle of the Cotswold countryside and the reason that they wanted it in an Indian style is because the family basically had working links to um, the British East India Company so you can see the typical Indian architecture like that green onion shaped uh, dome up there which is made of copper I believe and around the side of the house you can see there's a curved conservatory which is actually attached to the side of the house now this curved conservatory which links onto the house it's now used um, as a uh, tea room and stuff like that so if you want to chill there's table and chairs in there and stuff and you can have something to eat and drink and whatever A few bits of colour, colour in the glass here. This is inside the end of the conservatory. And again, we've got the Indian theme here. That's inside the tea rooms in there. And as you can see, it's the uh, curved conservatory which attaches onto the side of the house. That leads us out into what's known as the Persian Garden. Nice working fountain. A bit further down, towards uh, looking out towards the parkland, got a sundial there. Interestingly, although the exterior of the house and uh, some of the gardens are in a typical Indian style, uh, the actual interior of the house is sort of in a classical European style. Now what I'm going to do shortly is um, I'm going to have a look around all the different bits of the garden, which look really interesting to be fair. And we've got, um, they give you a map when you uh, enter which is quite a nice map actually, so we're going to just have an explore all around the grounds and the gardens and stuff like that but these are really nice and um, the main grounds and the landscape were actually by someone called Humphrey Repton and he was sort of the successor to um, the famous gardener Capability Brown Another interesting thing to note was a lot of the gardens were restored in 1968 after being neglected for quite a while um, during World War II and you know slightly beyond. And just here this is the first little feature we're going to have a look at which is a grotto not too far from the house. Bit of a waterwork going on down here. appears to be a lion's head, I think. 
at the back of the grotto, you can see that. That's quite a nice little grotto. Now this little feature here, just around the corner from the grotto, this is known as the Tennis Pavilion and as you'll see that's got uh, a dome on the top again. So this is typical Indian style. And the sort of uh, design on the door there, in a fan shape. If you look inside, some tennis rackets and whatnot, if you can see in there. And gets its name from the tennis court that's right next to it. From the tennis pavilion here. Yeah. There's a nice view down to um, the bottom bit of the park where there's a pool and stuff so there would have been a nice view from that pavilion a couple of cedar trees and uh, different type of trees down there on the side of the uh, pavilion there's a little plaque just saying that it was erected in 1961 by Cyril and Betty Kleinwert who cared for the house and gardens from 1943 to 1976 this is apparently Dionysus urn. Seem to be some sort of Greek or Roman classical figures on there. One playing a musical instrument and various goings on. There's a building up on the top of the hill. Yeah, and it's currently having some renovation by the looks of it, with scaffolding and stuff. And this is called the Old Dairy. Not sure if we'll be able to get in there or not. So yeah, the Old Dairy is private. can see from up here where the dairy is on the top of the house, I mean top of the hill. There's commanding view of the house, etc. Oh look, there's a nice bench to take in the view if you want. So as we move further away from the house, um, we come across a pool here, and I believe this is called the Temple Pool, and there's a temple at the rear of it, obviously that's where the pool gets its name from. Yeah, quite a nice fountain there. It's nice when you come to these country estates and all the sort of waterworks are working how they should. Just sets it off nicely. And the temple at the end of the pool, I think that's called the Surya Temple. And that appears to be uh, sort of guarded by a couple of. Uh, Sculptures of bulls here. Yeah. There's some quite steep steps there, but uh, you can get up and have a closer look at the temple. So I'm going to assume that that figure is Surya. I could be wrong, so correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, it's quite a nice little temple. Here's one of the bulls.
And then there's a bit of a rocker eh? Some shells and stuff around the outside. And you can look back on the pool and the environment beyond it. That's a nice little area. Not sure if you can see, but there's some little fishes in here. Not sure what they are. They might dart off in a minute. Now these pools, they're all uh, spring fed from above and they work their way down the gardens and grounds and eventually they um, end up in a river. You can see the water making its way down to what will be the next pool that we'll go down to shortly which also looks interesting. So as we move further downwards this bridge comes into sight and this is called the Indian Bridge and you can see little sculptures of balls again on the top and that track across the top of the bridge um, carries the drive up towards the house and those balls again I think they're meant to sort of signify protection for the estate so here we go this is the Indian bridge underneath and the stepping stones here let's go and have a look uh -huh. so come to it this is called the snake pool apparently and if you can see that in the middle that's actually a tree trunk with a snake wrapped around it and the snake actually looks like it's got three heads hopefully you can see that And then you can see the other side of the Indian Bridge there. With a little waterfall coming off the side of it. So that's another nice um, sort of water garden. That's really nice. There you go, you can see people walking across the drive towards the house there. That's a bit closer to the uh, snake's head on the top of that log. There's actually a seat underneath the bridge as well. Stone seat. And then there's some ironworks here which looks like they used to uh, have gates or something. In there. This is the top of the bridge. With the balls, etc. You can see the water still trickling its way down the landscape till it comes down to this larger pool at the bottom. Yeah, so this larger pool at the bottom, this is called the Island Pool. And if we go over this bridge, <coughs> the 
there's an island in the middle, which is obviously where it gets its name from. So you can walk across. Step onto the island. And then carry on over to the other side. Some kind of weeping willow tree or something like that. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello there. Have a nice day. Seizing Coat was actually such an interesting building when it was first built that it was the inspiration for uh, the Brighton Pavilion. And if you just look at it up on that hill, with its big onion dam, that is quite a sight in the middle of the Cotswolds. Just off to the right hand side of the house, uh, over here. This room at the end of this block is apparently called the tent room. And apparently that's because someone um, in the house, they, uh, they didn't want to actually camp out, so what they'd do is they'd set up a tent in that room. So that was sort of the nearest thing to proper camping without doing it outdoors. And as you can see, that's in the Indian style again. Fan shaped uh, windows and stuff like that. So yeah, that was Seizing Coat House in the Cotswolds. A bit of a rare, extraordinary uh, Indian style country house in the English countryside. And I think it's £7.50 for adults just for the gardens and grounds, or £12.50 if you want to add the tour onto the end. So that ain't bad. I mean, if you're in the area for a couple of hours, I'd recommend coming and having a look because it is quite a rare thing, really. And uh, yeah, that's it. So thanks a lot for watching as usual. And uh, we'll see where we end up next time. Thanks a lot.